Good morning. Welcome. Valimar Jensen is kind of a big deal. So she is an award-winning performer. She's a recording artist. She's traveled the world. I have on my phone her bio. She and her husband, Frank, have, um, when I say around the world, I mean literally around the world, they've performed, traveled, toured United States, Canada, the UK, Poland, Italy, Switzerland, France, Germany, Belgium, St. Martin, St. Kitts, Bonaire, where's our geography teachers? Ghana, Israel, Japan, Singapore, and China. She has performed on Broadway. She's co-authored performances, plays, musicals. Um, she has won the prestigious Kennedy Center Medallion for her work in university and college theater education. She has performed in front of the Pope at World Youth Day. Um, her and her husband, Frank, performed in front of 300,000 people, which is like 300 of our schools, right? Isn't 300 times? Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Or Mr. Mr. Myers. Um, she has her credentials in terms of um, degrees and whatnot. But I think what I appreciate most about Valimar and her husband is that they're people of faith. And today, this morning, she's going to share with us not just her talent and her, and her husband's talent, but really share her faith. So without further ado, please welcome Valimar and Frank Jensen. <laughs> Thank you for that warm welcome. I am so thrilled that you had gave me a warm welcome because for a person from California, it's cold outside, y'all. It we're thrilled to be here. And this month, February, is the month that we celebrate Black History Month. So as a part of that celebration, thinking about who I am as a Roman Catholic and what, what that means being a black Catholic, I want to celebrate some of the wonderful people that have done fantastic things that are black Catholics. And there right now, there are six black Catholics on the road to sainthood. And this, these are portraits of them. And I'll tell you a little bit about them as we move through the program. One of the things that these six people have in common is that they're all of African descent. So I want to tell you about an experience that I had going to Ghana, West Africa. And everywhere we went, I went with Catholic Relief Services, everywhere we went, the people greeted us. And we would get out of the van, we'd pull up to the village limit or the city limit, and the people would be there standing, the whole village would be there to greet us. And as soon as we got out of the van, they would immediately start dancing and singing, and then they'd stop and they'd make speeches of welcome, and then they'd dance and sing some more, and then they'd stop, and then the youth would make speeches, formal speeches, and then we'd all start dancing, and they'd make us dance with them. It was amazing, and it was like that wherever we went in Ghana. So I want to kind of recreate that. I want to recreate that warm welcome. So I want to teach you a word that in one of the languages in Ghana means Welcome. Everyone say Aquaba. Say Aquaba. Aquaba in one of the languages in Tw in Twi in Ghana means welcome. So say Aquaba. Oh, thank you. You've just welcomed me. Turn and look at somebody and say Aquaba. Wonderful. Great. Now we're going to. We're going to actually stand up, so let's stand up because, you, you know, one of the things I noticed in Ghana is that people moved and you can't, you can't move sitting down. So look at the person next to you and say, you gotta move. All right, wonderful. And instead of shushing you, this will be our way of bringing each other back on the same page. I will say, God is good, and you say, all the time. God is good? All the time. And then we'll be back on the same page. So none of your teachers or those who catechize you have to go, shh. No, we'll just know when we're not on the same page, I'll say, God is good? All the time. And then we're back on the same page. Look at someone and say, sing with me this morning. Sing with me this morning. All right. And we're going to sing and we're going to move together. Anything that does not move is dead. 
Look at somebody and say, I am not dead. All right. So we're going to move together this morning. God is good. Open your feet shoulder length apart like this. Now I want you to just very easily, not too much, maybe like a 10% angle, lean to the right. And lean to the left. Lean to the right. And lean to the left. Now double time to the right and the left and the right and the left and the right and the left and the right and the left. Awesome. Now stand still. Stand still. We're going to do the same thing, only this time we're going to create a minor miracle. We're going to clap our hands on the same beat together. Okay. All right. Like this, like this. Gonna lean and clap, lean and clap. Open, close, open. Oh, that's it. Now, you will repeat what you hear.
Pierre Toussaint. Pierre Toussaint was a person who was very, very generous. That's what he was mostly known for. He was taken to New York from Saint Dominique, right during the revolution where Saint Dominique was becoming Haiti. And he became very rich and famous by being a hairdresser to the rich and famous. He eventually married his sweetheart, Juliet, and they became like Beyonce and Jay-Z in New York. Oh yes, they were well known, they were so wealthy, and they would give all of their wealth away, buying the freedom of those who were enslaved. They would adopt orphans, they gave to, they started Catholic charities in New York, helped to start that. They gave to Catholic schools, and he adopted his niece, and so much of his wealth was lost in the great fire of 1835 in New York City, but still, he kept working and acquiring more wealth and giving it away. He is the only person buried at St. Patrick's Cathedral, only lay person buried under the altar in St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City right now. He is Venerable Pierre Toussaint. Say Venerable, Venerable. Pierre Toussaint. And I ask that venerable Pierre Toussaint pray for us. He lived his life inviting people to come follow him as he followed Christ. Doing those things that he felt were Christ-like and what Jesus would do. So I want you to just do this gesture like this. Come and go with me. Do that. And come and go with me. Now point up. How many of you like to go up when you die? Go to heaven? Yes? Yeah. So when we make it off this planet, we hope to go to heaven. So that's the gesture. Say, come and go with me where I'm bound. That's it. So those two gestures. We're to live our lives. We are to follow Jesus and invite people to follow us as we follow Jesus. And I use spirituals because all six of these holy people use spirituals and same spirituals in their lifetime. So it's very simple. I'm gonna show you one more person, and then we'll, or maybe, maybe we'll, are y'all okay standing up? Yeah. All right, we're gonna stand up for about five more minutes, okay? I think you can do it. You're younger than I am, and I know you can stand up for five more minutes. This is Venerable Henriette DeLille, born in 1812. God is good. So more listening, more listening. Thank you. She was born in 1812 in New Orleans, Louisiana, and she was born into what was called the placage system. It was a system in which free women of color would, would have these relationships with rich white Frenchmen in order to have power and wealth and position, and she rejected that. She made a declaration and she asked for confirmation she wanted the sacrament of confirmation and she rejected this placage system. And she said, I believe in God, I hope in God, I love, I want to live and die for God. And she did, she founded the first nursing home for the elderly in the United States of America. Give her a big hand for that. It's in the National Registry. She decided that she was going to teach children of color, black children, enslaved and free. She became known as the servant of the slaves. She would teach these children. And she dedicated herself to baptizing those who needed baptism, for standing up for marriages. And she did so much for orphans. And she was known as the person who was the advocate for the slaves. She woke up every single morning with her mind on Jesus. Venerable Henriette DeLille, pray for us. Say, Venerable Henriette DeLille, pray for us. Very easy song like this. I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was that you say, stayed on Jesus. Guys, you're an octave lower. Stayed on Jesus. So high voices, low voices. Ready? Stayed on Jesus. Stayed on Jesus. Once more. Stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind and it was stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind and it was stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So I sing 
hallelujah and then you sing hallelujah. 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 Then together we sing hallelujah. Ooh, 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 yeah. Uh oh. Time to put your ooh, ooh, ooh on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then together. Augustus Tolton. He was born enslaved and his father escaped and joined the Union Army. After that happened, his mother said, oh no, I have to get my children out of this situation. So she found a rickety old boat and she put her three children, including father, who wasn't a father at that time, but Augustus Tolton in the boat. And she told them to lay low in the bow of the boat. And with an oar, one oar, she made herself across the Mississippi River with her children. They could hear the bullets of the Confederate Army in the air as they went across that water. But she was determined, oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom, over me. Before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home. She was a determined woman, and she quietly and very stealthily made herself across the Mississippi with her three children. They got to the other side, and they were in Quincy, Illinois, where Augustus felt he was called to the priesthood. Yes, they were Catholic. There were Catholics who enslaved people. There were Catholics. So they were Catholics, and she enrolled him in a Catholic school, and within less than a month, they started to get death threats against the teachers and the administration and the school, so she pulled him out of that school. He felt he was called to the priesthood. He could not get any seminary in the United States of America to accept him because they did not accept him. He was black, that's the reason. There were no black priests. He went to Italy and he became a priest in Italy. He was ordained and he wanted to go to the continent of Africa to serve in the continent of Africa so he learned French and Italian and German and some of the African dialects and the cardinals had a different idea they sent him right back to Quincy, Illinois where he became the United States of America's first black priest. Give him a big hand. He eventually ended up in Chicago, Illinois. That's another long story how that happened. He was rejected time and time again. Congregations would not accept him. So he ended up on the south side of Chicago and he wanted to create a mother church for all black Catholics in the United States at St. Monica. So he would travel around raising money for St. Monica's church in south side of Chicago. And he was a dynamic preacher, had a beautiful voice, so he would do parish missions and raise money, and he died at 43 of exhaustion. And so what would have happened if his mother had not taken that first courageous 
weighed in the water. If she had not done it, he might have lived and died as an enslaved person. So I want to just sing this song dedicated to his mother and to him for the work that he did. You see, he believed and he taught that we each are children of God and we take little steps every day of learning to be more and more like Jesus. We take baby steps. Look at somebody and say, it's okay to take baby steps. So as a sign and symbol of the baby steps we take every day, take little tiny baby steps that direction, away from the piano. Okay, little baby steps, little baby steps, little baby steps. Stop, put your hands in the air, wave them like you just don't care what you do. And you're gonna sing, God's gonna trouble the water. Do that. Go back to the left, little step to the left, little step to the left, little step, stop. to you and say that was awful can we do better say yes we can one two three sing God's raise your right hand cross it over your body pat your own self on the back that was really good that was good okay here we go little step to the left little step to the right to the right to the right to the right stop hands up What to do? We did it earlier. Gonna sway, clap, sway, clap, sway, clap. Way in water. Way in water. Children now, way in water. Hands up. When I look deep inside, what do I see? Before we sit down, we're going to play, pray together. We're going to pray this prayer, the Our Father, because all six of these holy people every single day prayed this prayer. And it's the prayer that unites all Christians 
Protestants and Catholics from all over the world were united with this prayer. So let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a seat. We move from the side of the venerables. These are all three that are venerable. So the first step to becoming a saint is servant of God. So a case is open for you by a bishop, archbishop, or cardinal that you will that you should become a saint. So a case is open. You become a servant of God. When the Pope declares that you have lived a life of hero heroic virtue, you become a venerable. And then you need a, a miracle uh, that's recognized by the church. And then you move up to being a blessed. And then you need another miracle and you move up to being a saint. So these three, they're, on, they're venerables. And the three on this side, on your right, they are servants of God. So, servant of God, Mother Mary Elizabeth Lang, she opened the first school, Catholic school for black Catholic children in Baltimore. So she is known for having the very first school, Catholic school for black students. Give her a big hand for that. She's also co-foundress of the Oblate Sisters of Providence, the first order in the United States of America, the first order for nuns that are black. So give her another hand for that. So I wanna come back so I don't disrespect venerable Mother Henriette DeLille. She was co-foundress, but she, she, she got beat out. Sorry, mother. This mother over here beat ya. She opened one later, a few years later, than Mother Lang. And she opened, so let's give a big hand to Venerable Henriette DeLille for the Sisters of the Holy Family, co-founders. So one of the things that Mother Mary Elizabeth Lang, she really believed in the providence of God to help her with all of the things that she faced. She faced so much racism so much um, oppression and she believed in the providence of God. She believed that God has the whole world in his hands. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God has the whole world in God's hands? Yes. And that God is entrusting us to care for each other and to care for earth. But I really love this song, a song that I'm sure she sang. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world. Greeley. Julia Greeley, she was born as an enslaved person and she made her way from Missouri after the emancipation and she made her way through Wyoming and finally settled in Denver where she was the housekeeper and maid for Mrs. Gilpin who was married to the first territorial governor of Colorado. And Mrs. Gilpin introduced Julia Greeley to the Roman Catholic faith and helped her with her confirmation. She became a confirmed Catholic and a devout <laughs> daily communicant at Sacred Heart. She was devoted to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 
and what was known about her during her day was that she was Denver's angel of charity, a one-woman St. Vincent de Paul society. She would pull her little red wagon around on foot, walking all over the city of Denver. During the day, she would carry pamphlets of the Sacred Heart to every fire station in Denver. Even if they weren't Catholic, she said they have a very dangerous job and the Sacred Heart of Jesus is for them. So she would give them these pamphlets, even though she never learned to read or write, she knew these pamphlets would do them good. Then at night, she could be seen often hiding behind a building or behind a bush. You see, she did everything she did in terms of giving, she did in secret. She didn't want anyone to know it was her. Stories were told of her hiding behind a bush and then she'd see a little boy passing by and she'd grab the little boy and she'd say, come here little boy. Yes ma'am, yes ma'am. You see those potatoes on the porch there? They're gonna freeze, it's Denver. It's gonna freeze tonight and been, I've been waiting for them to find them for about two hours now. What I want you to do, little boy, I want you to go and knock on the door and run away really fast. And then they'll come and discover the potatoes. And don't tell them that Julia Greeley sent you. So that's what she would do. She would engage people into helping her take care of the needs of the poorest people of Denver. And she did that all of her life in Denver. When she died, there was no notice in the paper about her wake the day before the funeral, but word of the mouth got all around the city. And when they opened the doors for her wake, the line was four hours long. You had to stand in a four hour line to offer your respects to her. So she was very beloved and to honor her, she is now buried in the Cathedral of the Blessed Conception in Denver. She's the only lay person buried there. But to honor her, I want to sing this song called Walk Together Children. Stand to your feet. Very easy song. Do your hands like this and say, we will walk and never. Now wipe your brow off and say, tire. We will walk and never. We will walk for justice. These are the scales of justice. Now shape out the world with your hands in this great land, all right? Put your feet up and down like this. Don't go anywhere, just walk in place. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. We will walk for justice in this great land. I want to tell you about, she can be found so many things about her online. Sister Thea Bowman, she is a servant of God. She was a Franciscan sister of perpetual adoration, the first black Franciscan sister of perpetual adoration, and to date, the only. She called herself an old folks child. Her parents were very older when she, when the, she was born, and she was born, she had this dynamic personality, beautiful voice, vivacious and filled with life. She became a professed nun 
and then she became a famous person who traveled around the United States and around the world proclaiming intercultural awareness, proclaiming that God loves all God's children and that God gives each of us a gift to give back to God. Even after she was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1984, she continued to travel around the world with the message of love. She is known, and I want you to Google her. This is your homework. Google Sister Thea Bowman, and you will find that she did something very famous. She talked to, she addressed the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops in June of 1989, and she taught them about black Catholicism taught them some things they didn't know about black Catholics. The miracle is she got them all to stand up and hold hands. All the bishops in the United States, they held hands, they swayed, they sang, we shall overcome together. So Google Sister Thea Bowman, Thea Bowman, T-H-E-A-B-O-W-M-A-N, and learn more about her. So I ask all three of these servants of God to pray for us, say pray for us. So this is her signature song, This Little Light of Mine. Give yourselves a big hand! Thank you. Head out to your wind time. Thank you so much, you guys.